Power by Ecotech. Hello guys, this is Victor with Worldwide Corals. Welcome to our YouTube channel again. I'm gonna show you guys another 750 gallon tank right behind me today. It's System 11. We call it the trigger tank. It is uh, eight feet long, it is five feet wide, it is 30 inches tall. Uh, the reason why we went with the size, we didn't wanna go more than 30 inches tall. It makes it too difficult to work in the tank. But uh, the reason why we didn't want any wider, as you guys can see, there's a platform here for us to climb and be able to work in the tank. Uh, the size here, they match the straight line that we do, so we're able to keep the hallway. It was a standard size, I think it was three feet that we have to keep it in order for wheelchair access and stuff like that. But other than that, that was the main reason. It was as, we went as big as we could with the square footage that we had to work with. This thing has a Hydro Wizards ECM 63. A lot of you guys will never have a chance to, to try these power heads. They're required for very, very large applications. Even for a tank this size, 750 gallon tank, it might be on the smaller size. These power heads, they produce on the tune of 15 to 16,000 gallons per hour, I think, somewhere in that range. Uh, we had them for a long time. They're very reliable, they don't break. Uh, we got them with the honeycomb. Uh, it is able to protect the pump for longer periods of time. And the reason why we went with something so strong, this tank behind us is gonna be mainly SPS, similar to the 1500. It's gonna be about 80, 90% aquaporous, and then the rest is gonna be some euphilia, some goniopores, and a couple mushrooms. But mainly, we needed to get that extra flow, especially being a peninsula tank to be able to deliver all the way down. What happened, all of you guys know a little bit of the history of this tank. There's a video that we released about, I wanna say 12 months ago, a year ago. It's called the Aquascaping, Reaquascaping, the 750 gallon tank. Uh, we had a gentleman called Neil. He built the most beautiful custom rocks you will ever seen. And unfortunately, he passed away a few years back and we weren't able to get that same rock again. So one day I was doing a large project for a customer of ours and he walked into the farm and he fell in love with the rocks and I told him the story. He's like, I wanna buy that rock. And I told him I couldn't and he made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So we break down the tank, which at the time it wasn't too far into it. So we took the corals out, sold them the rock and then we had to pick new rock, you know? So what happened is six months went by and it's not that easy to start an Acropora tank when you're trying to run everything to a rigorous quarantine process. So therefore what happened was it took a little longer than what I wanted to. And then Rifapalooza was coming and everybody's coming into town. Everybody wants to see the farm. So I went ahead and I added a bunch of beautiful colonies that we have in the aquaculture site behind us and I just filled it up with that. So in the meantime, slowly but surely, we're gonna be removing a lot of those corals and replacing them with new aquapores that they are going through the quarantine process now. So that was the reason for it. The salt that we use is uh, Brightwell Aquatics, you know, Neo Marine. We've been using the salt for over 10 years. Uh, it's no secret that we work close with uh, Brightwell Aquatics. We've been happy with their product. Uh, great results, very stable sun, you know, great parameters, easy to mix. I just couldn't say enough, good enough things about their salt. You know, I'm very happy with them. So people know that we've been working close with uh, Reef Octopus for the past 10 years or so. It's a fantastic skimmer. It's very easy to tune, so we're very happy with it. The lighting schedule is a little bit different on this display tank than it's on the retail floor display tanks. Normally on our display tanks, we run four hours of white in our display tanks and the retail floor. Back here, we do five hours. We get a little extra growth, and since customers are not seeing it all the time, we're able just to run more white. Uh, the intensity that we're running this specific tank is 70%. As we remove some of the favias and some of the additional LPS corals that we have, and we have more aquapores and they grow a little more, our intentions are to get the lights up to a 90 to 100% eventually. That's the goal. So the purpose of this fish behind us, as you guys can see, uh, we try to keep our fish mostly utilitarian, you know? Tanks, we love for them to pick on algae, rats to look for parasites, you know? just for look anything unwanted and stuff like that. And then some of the bigger tanks, not just to pick on the algae, but also the waste that they produce, it turns into great nutrients for the corals. It grows pretty much as food, coral food, you know? JW, when they asked him why did he put um, five yellow chorus rats, and he said he got tired of all the other rats jumping. The chorus rats are known for not jumping out of the tank for the most part. So I never seen people put multiple of them. He put five of them. And what's cool of them, one of them eventually turned into a male and now they're a harem. A lot of people ask us if all the mother colonies are in this display right behind me. The answer is no. We just have too many different uh, species, too many different type of corals. I say it's got to be close to, I haven't counted, but I want to say we have a thousand different species of corals. And even though with all the large display tanks that we have here in-house, 
is we're not able to put them all into the display tanks. We just normally, if a coral is doing very well and we have it growing in multiple display tanks, we take it out and then we find a coral that is not doing so well or we don't have a lot of and then we put it into the display tank. So it's just a process based on how much we have of something or how well the coral is doing. So we plan on adding anywhere from 40 to 50 more Acropora frags in here uh, once we remove the rest of the LPS and some of the Fabias. So if you guys come in here for next year for Reef of Palooza, we'll be glad to show you the farm and uh, hopefully by then it'll be a full blown SPS reef. This is system 11A. We grow on tons and tons of Acroporas here. A lot of the Acroporas are coming from, uh, from our Pentagon, from our 1500 gallon tank, from system 12, from this actual system. There's a few of them that are starting to get a little bit on the bigger side. Uh, these corals are 100% uh, clean in this entire system. All of the corals are. They go through a rigorous uh, quarantine process uh, many, many months before they even make it back here. Uh, we take big pride on that, guys. It took us years to come out with the system to be able to beat a lot of these crazy parasites that everybody knows, acroporating flatworms, red bugs, multiporating nudies, and many other ones that it just give you nightmares, you know? 11B, this is a system that we use, as you guys can see those four racks right there. We use them for live cells. This is more production of acroporas here. Uh, there's some beautiful um, Colorado sunburst anemones there, and more echinaras growing in the back rocks. This is 11C. Uh, we're growing a giant uh, aquaculture hydnophora. We got some Symphilia wilsoni back there. We have a echinata, more Symphilia wilsoni. Uh, overgrown aquaporas back there for the live cell also. So the anemone here, this is a lemon drop. Uh, we bought it a few, year, a few years back in um, California. And now we had it on the uh, Pentagon for a few years. It wasn't doing so well, now it's coming back and his yellow is coming out very strong right now. All right, guys, enough with the aquaporas. This is system 11D. This one is one of our nice systems here. We're growing a lot of euphilia here. Tons of mushrooms in the back. We're doing a lot of aquaculture, like I was telling you guys earlier. We don't have room to be able to um, grow all the mother colonies over there. So whatever feel like, if we feel like if we want extras or something is special, we come and just glue it right back here into these rocks, you know? It, it works well for us. Uh, we're growing tons of mycediums, tons of grandis pallies. Uh, we're growing a lot of chalices, blastomusas, euphilias, beautiful mushrooms that you guys can see here, some holy grail torches over there, a little bit of everything, guys, some humus. We're very happy. This system is doing amazing for us. So here we are, 11E. This we're growing all Montiporas and a few on clusters. A lot, a lot of healthy Montipora here. We have um, Jason Fox Purple Fusion Grafted Monty. We got some Grafted Cyphestria. We got our, our original Grafted Cap. We have some Sun Grafted Grafted. We got some uh, Blue Petal Cap. We got a little bit of everything. Super, super healthy system. We're aquaculture um, Montiporas like it's no tomorrow. They're growing very, very fast. Very easy coral to maintain, you know? I definitely recommend this for beginners. This is one of my favorite systems here. It's 11F. We have a lot of this is pretty much uh, some crazy goniopores that we've been uh, keeping for a long time. We're very proud of them. There's many different types. We have greens, yellows, oranges, reds, reds with green centers, pinks, every color imaginable. Under the rainbow, we have it in here for Goniopora's. We're growing more Montiporas, Hydnophora's, leathers, Echinachinatas, crazy torches here, Cobozoanthids, few Favias back there, few Platygyras, a little Aiken, a little bit of everything. Uh, this system is beautiful. We really like what we have going on. On our next episode, you'll be watching system number 12. It's our Chromis Reef. There's going to be plenty of information on that reef as well. On the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys soon.